know it's important to have your home nicely decorated, especially if you want your wife to continue to live there. I mean, a few frilly and dainty decor items are fine here and there, you know. But you get too many feminine touches in there, and a man starts to feel disconnected from his environment. Whenever you see a guy move a couch and a beer fridge into the garage, it's a pretty good bet that his wife did all the decorating. And you need some masculine touches in there somewhere, don't you? For example, a chandelier. Flame-shaped light bulbs and crystal baubles is not going to do it. <laughs> Instead, I suggest something that's attractive and practical, but still has Y chromosomes stamped all over it. Take a few rims off of different sized bicycles, hook them together with 40-pound fishing line, and then you want to hang some shiny lures and bottle openers and mini flashlights to the outside edges. This baby's a one of a kind. <laughs> The beauty of using flashlights is you'll have light even if the power's off. And you can set the mood by the number of flashlights that you have on. <laughs> See, this is not just a chandelier. It's a mandolier. <laughs> but you know, the real beauty is when dinner's over, you turn your dining room into a disco. Dinner and dancing without ever leaving your house. It's to start a plum harvest, but wait, there's more. Oh, yeah. We always kick off plum harvest with a celebration right here at the lodge. Everybody meets out in the parking lot, and we tell our favorite plum story. <laughs> Some of them are more plum than others. <laughs> but the big finale is the possum drop. We drop a possum down the flagpole. Oh, my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. And we got a great big one this year, so it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> that guy Galileo said everything drops at the same rate. But I'm guessing he never chucked a possum out of his hotel window. <laughs> Uncle Red! Yeah? Yeah, I, I do not think I can stand here any longer and allow you to get away with this. Great, where are you going? <laughs> Nowhere, and neither is that defenseless little possum. Yeah, you cannot throw an animal out of the sky just for your own entertainment. <sighs> Harold, he's not gonna hit the ground, okay? It's a 40-foot drop, the rope is only 39. <laughs> What's the point? I mean, what, what, what does a falling possum have to do with plum harvest? Well, it plummets. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? The origins of the possum drop are shrouded in the mists of time. And the haze of alcohol. <laughs> hey, Red. Yeah? This fax just came in for you. Uh-huh. And they agree with you. Fantastic. Don't you want to know who it's from? <laughs> Not right away. Let me enjoy the moment. <laughs> it's a national animal rights group. Yeah, you asked them for a court intervention to stop the possum drop, and then they're doing it. What? Yeah, well, why would you do that? Watching that possum falls about the only fun I have left in life. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you were a member of an animal rights group. Well, I'm not, Dalton. Well, look, this fax is addressed to Mr. Green Care Possum Lodge. Receive his coupon for a free physical evaluation from Port Asbestos Piano Movers. <laughs> Find out if you can still carry a tune. <laughs> uh, cover your ear hole things, uh, Dalton. Uh, Mr. Green, you got 30 seconds to get Dalton to say this word. Hint. <laughs> Hint. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Okay, and go. Uh, okay, Dalton. Suggestion. Stupid. <laughs> um. Clue less. <laughs> okay, okay. Tip. Don't get married. Okay, okay. 
Supposing your wife is upset with you, but she doesn't want to say anything out loud. Oh, that'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> These things that I've been saying to help you guess the word have all been... Crap. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. This is an expression you hear when there's a whiff of something in the air. It, it wasn't me. <laughs> uh, we're almost out of time, Mr. Green. I know. Okay, Dalton, uh, supposing you come home and Anne Marie's waiting there in a skimpy outfit, that would be a... Miracle. <laughs> Trouble in paradise? Well, Red, you know, <laughs> I spend all my free time at the lodge. Does that give you a hint? There we go! Dalton, you can't be bored. You've only been out here nine hours. I didn't sleep well last night. Anne Marie keep you up all night, did she? <laughs> no, her jalapeno lasagna did. Uh, I only sleep well in prison, not at home, that's for sure. I mean, my mom slams the fridge door and yells, lights out, but it's not the same. Well, I sleep like a log. That's a weird expression, isn't it? Sleep like a log? I mean, how do we know logs are well rested? I've never seen one yawn. I can sleep anywhere, anytime. Well, I hope you don't have cruise control. I haven't slept one good night in my whole life. Well, Dolan, you just gotta let your mind go blank, then you can sleep anywhere. Oh, sure. That's easy to say. But I got stuff I gotta worry about. I got, if I didn't worry about everything, the whole world would go to hell in a handcart. How can I let my mind go blank? Well, all conversations like this are a pretty good start. So you're saying that, that we have trouble sleeping because we think too much? That can't be right. It's not the thinking. It's the worry. My whole face is just is covered in worry lines. Yeah, but you know, they make a nice pattern with the liver spots. Yeah. You just got to change your attitude, Dalton. If you can fix something, fix it. If you can't fix it, forget it. Either way, there's no point in worrying about it. Well, that doesn't always work. Like, I had this uh, speeding ticket once that I couldn't fix, and so I forgot about it, and um, I lost my license for two years. <laughs> in the human digestive system, the nutrition is represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the mouth and stomach who ingesticate food, and the large intestines who redistribute the offenders. These are their stories. Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Beautiful, aren't they? You know, nothing gets a man more excited than a customized car. Well, okay, there is one other thing, but a car is a lot easier to get a hold of. <laughs> Plus, a car won't get mad at you when you check out other models. <laughs> and trading up is a lot cheaper. <laughs> okay, I, I better stop in case Bernice is actually watching this. But maybe for a guy on a budget, you have to skip the four on the floor and go directly to two on the sidewalk. <laughs> but maybe there's another option. And this is going to sound blasphemous coming from me, but what about a bicycle? <laughs> Just because you ride a bike doesn't mean you have to look like a doofus. Don't go by Harold. Not if you take a page out of those car magazines and customize your ride. So today on Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how to make a cool-looking bike, a de nerd cycle Okay, right away, how can you look cool on a seat like that? It's like sticking your butt on a bunt cake. You need something that says Mac Daddy. Whatever the heck Mac Daddy is. I'm thinking old car wash mitt. <laughs> or as I like to call it, fun for upholstery. Okay, now a lot of the great cars today are customized to ride lower. Eh? Teenagers like everything riding lower. Their cars, their pants, their marks. Not to mention the lyrics to their rap songs. Okay, we can't go that low, but we can drop the bike a few inches by extending the forks on the front. Get yourself some old metal tubing. Another reason to finally get that dish. Pretty slick, huh? Now you're gonna need a couple extra pieces of brake cable for the added distance you stuck on the front wheel there. Fortunately for me, Dalton has a 12-speed bike that he doesn't care about. Well, I'm assuming he doesn't care about it. He didn't lock it up. You know, one of the hot looks on any hot rod? Fender skirts, which you can make yourself out of one of these old flying saucer sleds. 
Or if you're on a budget, you could use a garbage can lid. <laughs> Those handlebars still look a little dorky to me. So I'm gonna go with a leather cover like they have on the steering wheel of a Maserati. I have a pair of Moose Thompson's pants here that I will never return because they could be his only pair. And I never wanna see him like that. I'm gonna take out the belt and wind that around the handlebars. I may be able to do the whole frame. As the masseuse said to the client, it's all about the little touches. You know how sharp cars have the ground effects? You know those crazy neon lights down under the vehicle? Well, I've done the same thing by just moving the bike headlight down under the unit. I mean, a bike headlight is useless anyway. And now when she says, you gotta go home, you can say, I can't, I got no headlight. <laughs> and then, well, you know, <laughs> she'll drive you home. Now, for most lodge members, the volume of their exhaust is a point of pride. Every kid knows you can make a bike sound like a motorcycle by just having a couple of playing cards flicking against the spokes. But I've added a couple of jokers to the deck with these megaphones. <laughs> Speaking of which, I replaced the bell with a couple of truck air horns. Because when you're involved in a road rage confrontation, you don't want to be the one doing the tinkling. So remember, if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Now I'll just get rid of these dinky streamers. And I'm gonna go cruise the main drag. I want to talk to all you guys who've been married for a while and are spending almost every minute of every day with your wife. Now, if I was the head of the National Relationship Security, I'd be putting you on elevated alert. <laughs> you are in a crisis situation, my friend, but I have the solution. You need to find a girlfriend. <laughs> Not for yourself. You need to find a girlfriend for your wife. <laughs> See, your wife has a lot of interests that you don't, and she needs to talk about them to somebody. Somebody who cares about what purse goes with what shoes. <laughs> or whether some actress got Botox injections. <laughs> or anything, really. If she doesn't have a girlfriend, that leaves you. <laughs> and she's even more upset about that than you are. <laughs> now, the first place to look is the wives of your friends. Because if your friends are anything like you, they're probably in the same boat. <laughs> but even if it's a guy you think is a real dink, if your wife likes his wife, you're gonna have to take one for the team. <laughs> Because if you're the only friend your wife has, your life will become a living hell. <laughs> so go on out there and find her a girlfriend. If you don't, she may go out and find herself a boyfriend. <laughs> and that's bad news for everybody, including him. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. At Rothschild's, you don't pay a cent until you smell one. Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Well, it's funny how things have a way of working out, don't they, huh? Okay, we're not allowed to drop the possum, but we've come up with a substitute that everybody is pretty happy with. Well, almost everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is this really necessary? <laughs> Harold, you volunteered to replace the possum. Well, you know, sometimes when you get excited, you say things you regret later. I know, those are called marriage proposals, Harold. <laughs> so you really think I should do this? Yeah, you, you'll, you'll be safe with it, Harold. In oh. fact, I phoned the animal rights people, and once they found out you were replacing the possum, they were fine with it. You know, I, I might feel a little bit better about this if I thought I was going to survive. You're gonna be okay, Harold. We beefed up the flagpole, we got a heavier rope. Hey, I know. Why don't you put a couple of tires around you, you know, like that guy did that went over Niagara Falls? I bet his honeymoon was doing good, huh? <laughs> that way, even if you hit something, Harold, you probably just bounce, you know, like this. See? Hey. Okay, yeah, okay. This might be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so 
four losers had washed up on the beach. And Harold, when he gets into a comic, he gets into a comic. They were just sitting there, and they didn't notice the uh, two young girls. Well, I think Bill maybe didn't notice, and, and Walter for sure didn't notice. Very, very impressive. Huh? Now he notices, yeah. So all of a sudden, they're trying to make a big... Oh, they have one of those beach volleyballs. I guess they want to play beach volleyball, so the guys are suddenly interested. And get, the, get, the, get the magazine off your face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're looking good. <laughs> uh, this is the advantage of being in a small town. There's not a lot of choice. Uh, can you go over there? Harold's, uh, Harold's a little standoffish, which is usually in his best interest. No, yeah, no, they, yes, Harold, Uncle Sam wants you. <laughs> so, I, well, yeah, I guess those are technically called shorts, but I'm not sure. So they decide they're going to have Harold on their team. It's the first time Harold's been picked first for anything in his entire life. So he's all excited, and over he comes, and uh, I don't think he was expecting the girls to toss him the ball, and in fairness, because he's a little, usually a little more coordinated than that, so... Of course, the other three think well, we're looking good here. We're going to win. You know, Harold's not looking so dumb right now, is he? Huh? <laughs> All right, let's get going. Let's get the game started. So first thing that's going to happen is Harold's Harold's going to serve. Yeah, you guys are ready. And Harold's not as athletic as he looks. And into the, oh, okay, that's unfortunate. It's very tough to get injured playing volleyball, but I'm, I'm sure Harold can find a way. Oh yeah, yeah. And Walter fires it over the net to him, and oh, oh, oh yeah. All right, later that day, the girls are winning majorly, and oh, <laughs> oh. I guess you can see where this is going, and uh, it gets to the point where it's getting pretty ridiculous. Harold's making a sandcastle, and the girls, the girls are spiking everything. I, I think that was an attempt to jump over the net to congratulate them. I don't know, but Harold comes over and scorns them like he was the one who won the whole darn game. And, uh, couldn't figure out why the girls were so good, and then when you looked at their sports bag, there was a bit of a clue on there. Apparently, there was some kind of a national team or something. I don't when you have a beard, you get accused of looking scruffy all the time. Here's some advice. Don't take that as a compliment. <laughs> the woman who's making those accusations is someone who can shave you while you're asleep. <laughs> Just like Delilah did to Samsonite. Your wife might even suggest you shave your beard right off. Just show her an old picture of your clean-shaven grandfather. That'll probably make her come to her senses. So instead of throwing out the beard with the bathwater, just trim your beard so that the whiskers are all exactly the same length. For example, I like my beard to be three-eighths of an inch long, which happens to be the same diameter as red licorice. <laughs> well, the plum harvest kickoff is going great. Herod's all set for his big possum drop there. He's got a couple of tires around him. He'll be fine. I think it's got to be the first time he's worn rubber for protection. <laughs> I want to make it even extra safe, so I'm getting him an extra layer of underwear. Because that costume is a rental. It's time! Come on, Red, he's going! No, no, it's, it's safer to wash him in here, Dalton, because those tires can smash into a million pieces. Oh. You're running! Boy, Harold falls faster than that possum. I think it's the extra weight of all that rubber. Oh, I think he's gonna hit the ground. Holy cow, he bounced. He bounced again. Oh my, he came for the lake. Me 
meeting time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, if my wife is watching, um, probably won't be coming straight home after the meeting. Harold may have a couple of injuries, but I'm sure he'll bounce back. <laughs> now, now, now. Come on. You're good. You're fine. Hey, 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 hey. Don't you start whining. You got off lucky. Compared to what? Well, all the other apostles with a treadmark on them. <laughs> Here, you'll need this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and whoever that was and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> guys, come on and take your seat. Hurry up there. Meeting's coming to order. Everybody sit down. All rise. Sit down. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. All right, uh, Harold, I wonder if you'd mind standing up just for a minute. It's, uh, Harold, I just, on, on behalf of the law, I just wanted to thank you for doing a terrific uh, possum drop, and we were just, uh, we were wondering if you'd mind doing it one more time. Not a chance. What's the matter? Too tired? 